Welcome back guys and I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. In today's Big God Story, we are going to hear how the Israelites wanted a king. But before we jump in, let's pray. Father, we thank you for bringing us all here this morning to learn more about you. Help us to remember that we can trust you as our Lord of our lives. We're thankful that you love us and you sent your son to die for us. Amen. Okay, guys, let's read our memory verse. It comes from 1 Corinthians 15, 57 and 58. And it says, But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. All right, guys, you know what's next. Let's sing. 1 Corinthians 15, 57 and 58.
of the Holy Spirit, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? Because here we go. I love that God gave us voices and music to worship Him. Now, let's take a look in that wardrobe of wonder. Whoa, there's a crown. I think we know what that has to do with today's story, but let's hear from God's Word. Let's open our ears and see what we find in the big God story today. For many years, judges had led the people of God. Samuel was a judge over Israel. He loved God and always tried to do what was right. Some of the people had noticed that Samuel was getting old. They did not want him to die and leave his sons to be leaders, as they were bad men who tricked people. They started wondering what it would be like to have a king. We want a king! We don't want any more judges! All of the nations around us are kings. Why can't we have a king? We want to be like them. Samuel prayed and the Lord told him not to feel bad. It was not that the people did not want Samuel. They did not want the Lord to be their leader. Still, the Lord told Samuel that he would let the people have their way. Meanwhile, in another place, there was a young man named Saul. Hello, I'm Saul. Saul was supposed to be watching his father's donkeys, but the donkeys were lost. Saul and his father's servant looked all over the hill country for the donkeys, but they could not find the donkeys anywhere. Finally, Saul told the servant that they had better go back home. I have an idea, said the servant. I heard that Samuel, took man of God, is in took next town. Maybe he can pray to God and ask him where the donkeys are. So Saul and the servant went to the next town to find Samuel's house. When Saul saw a man walking along the road, he asked, Do you know where Samuel is? Hello, Saul. I am Samuel. Stop worrying about the donkeys. They have been found. Even though they had never met, Samuel already knew who he was and knew his name, and he knew about the donkeys. This really was a man of God. Saul went inside and ate a meal with him. The next morning, they walked outside, and Samuel gave Saul a special message from God. Saul, the Lord has chosen you to be king 
over all of Israel. Saul was somewhat surprised by this. Why would God choose me? I'm no one, I'm just a guy from a small village. Then Samuel poured oil on Saul's head to show that he had been chosen by God. So Saul went to Gilgal to wait for Samuel to come and make him king. All the people were waiting for Samuel in Gilgal too because they wanted to find out who the new king would be. When Samuel arrived, he told the people, God's choice is Saul. <gasps> Everyone looked around, but where was Saul? Even Samuel couldn't see him anywhere. Samuel prayed again and the Lord told him, He's hiding behind the baggage. Saul must have been very nervous, but the people thought he looked like a perfect king. He was taller than all the other men. The people were finally happy. They could have a king of their own. The people began shouting, Long live the king! Saul was the first real king of Israel. The people were happy now because they could be like the other nations. The end. Wow, what a great story. Guys, I'm so glad that we get to worship together today. Guys, we will see you next week. Bye.